today we're going to make a hot tub out of cedar 2 by 6s <laughs> It works. <laughs> I've seen round cedar hot tubs before, but those require quite a bit of skill to pull off. So I wanted to use cedar 2 by 6s typically used for decking to try and make the easy DIY version. After cutting the 2 by 6s to length, I then laid out one of the side panels on my Maker Brand T-Bar clamps. I'm going to use two layers of 2x6s for each panel and I want to offset the joints. This means I have to rip down a few pieces on my table saw to help me get that staggered effect. I also want overlap where these side panels are going to meet the shorter end panels. So the second layer of 2x6s is going to be three inches shorter on each side. I started by using a caulking gun to squirt clear flex seal construction adhesive on the edges of the 2x6s. I then applied just a little bit of pressure with the Maker Brand clamps to push the edges all together. I really want to seal in between these two layers because that's the part that's going to be invisible. So I used a paintbrush to apply a real thick coat of liquid clear flex seal and then started screwing down the second layer of 2x6s using two and a half inch long stainless steel screws. I started at the bottom of the side panel and I temporarily screwed in a one and a half inch wide strip, but once I got the first piece of the second layer installed, I could remove that. And the gap that's left there will create a nice ledge that overlaps with the bottom of the hot tub. I kept adding the second layer and occasionally I'd use a clamp to help hold the pieces tightly together. I had to loosen up the clamps a little bit to install the last piece and it was one of the ones that I had ripped down on the table saw. Now I have a nice 3 inch thick solid wood panel with a layer of waterproof flex seal in the middle of it. I made the second side panel same as the first starting with the 1.5 inch wide spacer but this time I used spring clamps to help keep the 2x6s aligned. I also discovered that a rubber spatula was better at spreading the flex seal than a paintbrush. I also applied a thick coat of flex seal to the ends since the corners of this tub are going to be the weak points for leaks. Next up I started on the bottom panel. I laid out some boards just to see how wide it would feel if I was inside of it and decided to make it six two by sixes wide. Again, I started with the one and a half inch wide spacer and flex sealed in between the second layer. This bottom panel, however, doesn't have an overlap on the ends. You definitely could add one and it would create an additional layer of waterproofing, but I thought with this way, it would be easier to install the end panels. I ran out of the clear flex seal, so I switched to white which I was trying to avoid using because I had a feeling I would have to really scrape it out of the cracks as it oozed up when I screwed the boards together. This bottom panel has one and a half inch ledges on both sides to receive the side panels. Once the flex seal had fully cured, I then used a razor blade just to scrape out the excess. I measured the top layer of the bottom panel so that I would know how long to cut the pieces for the two end panels. While I was getting started on the end panels, I had my sister Jessie sand the side panels. We just sanded them to 150 grit. The end panels are just going to be solid slabs with no overhangs at all. The white flex seal was a little too tedious on the cleanup side of things. So for these end panels, I just use clear silicone. It doesn't spread as easy as the liquid flex seal, but I made sure to do multiple continuous beads so that I could be sure that the panels would be waterproof. These panels are mostly, but not perfectly flat, so I cut some big pieces of cedar 6x6s and screwed some 2x6s underneath them so that I would have a really heavy beam that I could clamp the panels down to. The longer panels weigh about 60 pounds each, so I screwed in some right angle brackets to serve as temporary supports to help get them at a nice right angle. I laid down a lot of clear silicone and used the Maker Brand clamps to really pull the pieces together.
Having two extra sets of hands was really helpful, as well as having the, the 6x6 beams be a little bit long so that we could rest the side panels on those beams. I switched to 3 inch long stainless steel screws so that I'd have a full 1.5 inches of penetration. The end panels were the trickiest because I didn't have clamps long enough to really push them all the way in. So we just used a mallet to really force them in place. I used five and a half inch long lag screws along the bottom. And once those caught, they really sucked that panel all the way in. I then followed up with three inch long screws through the side panels and into the end panels. These T-bar clamps are definitely the MVP of this project. They're so heavy duty, there's no twist in them, and they have so much travel in the screw mechanism, they're perfect for flattening things out and pulling corners together. Jesse got inside and removed the temporary braces and used a putty knife to clean up the excess silicone that had squeezed out when we applied the clamps. Everything aligned mostly pretty well, but we did have to do a little bit of sanding on some of the corners because they just weren't quite even. There was maybe about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of overhang. To make the drain, I used a hose bib and some half inch copper pipe. I used an end piece of copper pipe and I drilled holes in it to act as sort of a filter. I drilled a hole through one of the end panels, applied some silicone, and screwed in the hose bib. I was pretty confident that the panels would be waterproof themselves, but I made sure to go back in and add beads of clear silicone on all of the inside corners. The tub weighs a couple hundred pounds, so I used a 2x6 as a lever to lift it up and move it into place. Alright, moment of truth. Time to test it out. I threw the hose in, turned on the water, and filled it all the way up, and to my surprise, no leaks. A lot of people were telling me that I would need steel banding or some sort of tension band around the outside to keep the weight of the water from pushing the panels out. But after filling it up and letting it sit for a few days, everything was fine, so I guess they were wrong. To heat the water, I'm going to use a hot tap on-demand propane water heater from Julka. It sets up in minutes and it has quick waterproof connections that don't require any wrenches. It's really more of a piece of camping equipment that's awesome for showers off the grid, but I decided to try it for this hot tub. But it wasn't turning the water straight from the hose quite as hot as I wanted. It was coming out just under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So my first dip in it was more of a warm tub than a hot tub, but still pretty welcome after a long day of building. Now before I show you how we set up a recirculating pump to get the water even hotter, let's hear from the sponsor of this video, MSE Audio. Here at Maker Ranch, we love to sit around a campfire and watch the occasional UFC fight, a movie, or just play video games. It's a lot of fun, but our setup is pretty janky. So when my friends over at MSC Audio contacted me and said they have some really awesome high fidelity outdoor speakers, I thought, well, here's the chance to upgrade our system. These speakers are serious. They're super high quality, they have great sound, and they really put a lot of thought both into the ease of setup and to the robust nature of the speakers themselves so that they can really withstand the elements. With a lot of other outdoor speakers, there's a bunch of pain points, including things like phase discrepancy with outdoor audio systems. These Cherry Bomb speakers consist of a subwoofer, mid-range, and a tweeter all in a single unit, and the full-range in-ground combo provides phased match audio between the low, mid, and high frequencies. Basically, they sound really good and they're easy to install. I'll put a little more information in the description along with a link so you can do your own research. But seriously, check them out. The speakers are designed so that the red parts can actually be buried into the ground underneath a deck with just the speaker part peeking up above it. Now we're in the process of building the new house and so we can't install them there yet. So we wanted a temporary solution that would upgrade our outdoor viewing experiences. So I decided to build an eight foot long cedar box that would serve as a TV stand and hide the bases of the speakers themselves.
I made a video about how I built this outdoor sound system, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below. All right, back to the problem of getting the hot tub even hotter. When I filled the tub, I ran the hose through the hot water heater and filled it with water that was hot directly out of the hot tap. Up next, I'm gonna install the recirculating pump, also from Julka, so that I can get that warm water even hotter. Once again, this is really easy. You just plug in the filtered inlet, plug in a hose that you use to replace the garden hose, and then I just plugged it into my goal zero. Now this pump is designed to be powered for camping applications, so, so it's meant to be plugged into a 12 volt outlet on a car. I just plugged it into one of my goal zero power packs, dropped in the end of the pump that has a filter on it, turned the propane back on, and now I was cycling the water from the tub through the hot water heater, heating it up some more, and back into the tub. It took about an hour and a half to take the water from 90 degrees up to a very nice 104 to 105 degrees. And I was ready to spend the afternoon in the hot tub getting a nice soak while listening to some of my favorite podcasts. Now cedar isn't the typical species of wood that you would get out of two by sixes from Home Depot. And I think a lot of people are probably wondering whether or not they can use basic two by lumbers, particularly two by eights, two by tens, or two by twelves just from Home Depot or Lowe's. I think it's possible, although the species from those stores tends to split and crack a little bit more. So it might just be a situation where you have to use a lot more flex seal. I'm actually curious about trying one of these with marine grade plywood, just doubling it up and once again using some flex seal or just a heavy duty epoxy in between the layers. This was a really fun project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Okay, bye.